When you hear the word flywheel, you might think of some heavy spinning disc buried deep inside your car's engine, and you'd be right. But what most people don't realize is just how important the flywheel really is. It's not just a random hunk of metal. This component plays a critical role in making your engine run smoothly, delivering power efficiently, and even helping you start the car. Without it, your driving experience would feel rough, unstable, and in some cases, your car might not even move. So today, let's break down what a flywheel is, how it works, and why it matters so much for your engine. At its most basic level, a flywheel is a large, heavy, circular metal disc that's attached to the rear end of your engine's crankshaft. Now, the engine itself doesn't produce power in a smooth, continuous flow. It produces power in bursts. Each piston fires in its own cycle, but between those combustion events, there are tiny pauses. Without something to balance it out, the crankshaft would jerk and vibrate, leading to a rough running engine. This is where the flywheel comes in. Its job is to store rotational energy and smooth out the delivery of power. Think of it like a spinning playground merry-go-round. Once you get it going, it doesn't just stop instantly. It keeps spinning because of the momentum you've built up. That's exactly what the flywheel does for your engine. It stores that rotational momentum and keeps the crankshaft turning steadily, even when the pistons aren't firing. But the flywheel isn't just about smoothing things out. It also has a crucial job when it comes to starting the engine. If you've ever turned the ignition key or pressed the start button, you've engaged the starter motor, which meshes with the teeth on the edge of the flywheel. That engagement allows the starter motor to spin the engine fast enough to begin the combustion process. Once the engine fires up, the flywheel disengages from the starter, but without it, your car would never start in the first place. Another important role of the flywheel shows up in manual transmission cars. If you've ever driven stick shift, you've pressed the clutch pedal. When you do, the clutch disc presses against the surface of the flywheel. That connection is what transfers the engine's power into the transmission and eventually to the wheels. Without the flywheel, there would be no surface for the clutch to grip, meaning no way to transfer power to the drivetrain. So it's not just an energy balancer. It's also the bridge between your engine and your transmission. Now, you might be thinking, all right, that's cool, but why does it have to be so heavy? The answer, is momentum. The heavier the flywheel, the more energy it can store. For everyday cars, you want a fairly heavy flywheel because it helps keep the engine smooth and forgiving, especially at lower speeds. But in performance cars, you'll often find lighter flywheels. Why? Because lighter flywheels don't store as much momentum, which means the engine can rev up and down much quicker. That translates to faster throttle response and sharper acceleration. The trade-off? is that the ride can feel a bit rougher, especially at idle, because the engine doesn't have as much stored energy to keep it balanced. Let's also talk about dual mass flywheels. Many modern cars, especially those with powerful diesel engines, use them to reduce vibrations even further. Instead of a single solid disc, the flywheel is split into two sections with springs and dampers in between. This design helps absorb more of the harsh vibrations from the engine before they ever reach the transmission. It makes the drive smoother, reduces noise, and helps protect the transmission from wear. The downside? They're more expensive and can wear out over time, leading to costly replacements. Now, before we go deeper, quick question. Are you enjoying these kinds of breakdowns? If you are, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It helps me out, and make sure you don't miss the next time we dive into another key car component. All right, let's keep going. Another area where flywheels shine is fuel efficiency. Because they store energy, flywheels help maintain momentum, which means the engine doesn't have to work as hard to keep turning smoothly. This reduces wasted energy, making the car more efficient overall. It's a small detail, but when you add up millions of revolutions per minute across thousands of miles, it makes a big difference. Beyond cars, flywheels are even used in renewable energy systems. In fact, some modern energy storage solutions use giant flywheels spinning at extremely high speeds to store electricity. It's the same principle. Store energy when you don't need it. Release it when you do. That's how fundamental this technology is, both inside your car and outside of it. Of course, flywheels aren't invincible. Over time, they can develop issues. If you've driven a manual car and noticed clutch slipping, difficulty shifting, or strange vibrations, the flywheel could be part of the problem. In particular, dual-mass flywheels can wear out faster since the springs and dampers inside them eventually break down. Replacing a flywheel isn't cheap. 
it usually requires removing the transmission, which means significant labor. But maintaining your clutch system properly and driving smoothly can help extend its life. At the end of the day, the flywheel is one of those hidden heroes of your car. It doesn't get the spotlight like the engine or the transmission, but without it, none of those systems would work as intended. It smooths out your power, helps you start the car, connects your engine to your transmission, improves fuel efficiency, and in some cases, even makes the drive more comfortable. From a simple solid disc to advanced dual mass designs, the flywheel is a perfect example of how one component can make a massive difference in how your car feels and performs. So while the flywheel doesn't get much spotlight, it's a silent powerhouse keeping your engine smooth and efficient. If this breakdown helped you, hit the like button, subscribe for more car tech explained simply, and let me know in the comments which part you'd like me to cover next.